Today I'm making a Bowie knife out of some leaf spring that I have. This is probably a car, maybe a Jeep. Uh, some leaf spring that I've had lying around the shop for quite a long time. I picked it up out at my deer lease, laying on the ground. So it could be from a Jeep. Anyway, I cut this piece out, just kind of eyeballed. I didn't really have a drawing or a pattern. Uh, just sort of an idea in my head what I wanted to make and I started forging out a notch there so I could uh, forge the tang and I so I did that I forged the tang first <coughs> this leaf spring is tapered along the edges so I have to come in and uh, knock back that taper so that I get a square uh, flush edge that I can work with when I'm making the knife. <clears throat> you can see right here I'm knocking back that taper. I had to do that on both sides. Uh, once I had that tang basically forged out to the uh, rough shape I wanted, I started on the tip. And again, no drawing, just uh, just made the shape as I went. Tried to get that general shape of a Bowie knife. And I'm just checking the straightness, trying to get it as straight as I could. And uh, once I was done with the forging, I took it over to an angle grinder, cut a little bit of the excess off the tang, and, uh, cleaned up some of the forge scale and, and uh, some of the forge marks, tried to get most of those out. I'm just making a notch that's there for the guard to fit in and then shaping it with the uh, angle grinder. Once again, just took it out over the sander, trying to get more of those forge marks out um, so that I can have a relatively clean surface to work with when I start grinding the bevels. There I'm just marking the center with the scribe. And I didn't do a whole lot of grinding, I tried to get the general uh, plunge lines, ground in, and a little bit of paper, and from there I just went to the heat treating, normalized it um, just once, and then I went in to heat treat it and quench it in oil after that. I let it cool in air until it reached room temperature and then hardened it. And again, that's my favorite peanut oil left over from the turkey fry. Put the bird it in the oven for an hour after that. And then I went to trying to grind the bevels. The 
So I did do a little bit of hand sanding on it, up to about 120 grit, mainly just to get rid of uh, the forge, the rest of the forge scale, and there was a few scratches left, but uh, ended up taking those out with a buffer. Here's the Bowie knife after some grinding and buffing. I'm going to do a blue finish on it, so it's going to be a dark finish. It's already really sharp just after the buffing and the grinding. And so I have these Axis deer antlers that I'm going to use to make the handle. These things have been sitting outside for a long time. So I may have to do some cleaning up on them, but I think they'll make a pretty decent handle. The thing about working with those antlers and that dust, it's everywhere. And uh, it has a unique smell if you've ever cut antlers or drilled through an antler. I think you probably know what I mean. Not much else smells like that. Yeah, I forgot to turn the camera on. Oh well. I cut out that handle out of that uh, antler and then I marked it so I could make the slot for the tang to go in. Drilled it out. I think so, 3 sixteenths drill bit. It gave me a little bit of trouble because of the length of the tang. You know, when you, when I tried to get deeper and deeper into that handle, the drill bit just wanted to skate around and go towards the center and I ended up using a file and I broke a drill bit, but eventually I made it work. Now I'm measuring the guard out. That's a, I think it was eighth inch thick brass plate. And uh, at the time I thought, you know, yeah, that would work. Uh, looking back, it really should have been, I should have used a thicker piece of brass, quarter inch, three eighths for this particular knife probably would have been uh, better. So I marked out where the slot needed to go. Uh, started out just by drilling a few holes in it and then I uh, used a little hand file to uh, finish up that slot for the tang to fit through. So once I had that slot cut out in the guard, I drew a kind of a rough shape of what I wanted that guard to look like and then took it over to the bandsaw and cut out some of the excess on the corners there. Then I could take it back over to the belt sander and refine that shape a little bit. So when I got to the point where I wanted to bend the edges, the ends, bend the ends of that guard. <clears throat> I used a couple scrap pieces of aluminum in the vice grip, so I put the aluminum on there just so I wouldn't mark up that brass. If I would have just clamped the brass with those vice grips, it would have put some deep marks in it. So I used the aluminum heated it up with the torch and then we use the end of the anvil to bend the ends. It left a few marks in the brass just from hitting it with the hammer and the anvil. Probably could have used a block of wood and a wooden mallet. Might have been better but uh, really I was able to get all those marks out uh, on the buffing wheel after that. So.
parking the hole in the handle, drilling it so I could get the brass pin in there. Then it was time to do the bluing on the knife blade. First time I'd ever blued any steel. I think I did three coats. Uh, you rinse and polish with steel wool after each coat. Let it dry for about a minute or so. Rinse it with cold water. Then you hit it with the steel wool. And I think one thing I probably could have done better was to decrease it first. I didn't have any acetone. I used a little isopropyl alcohol, which probably didn't do the best job to try and clean it before I blued it. When I had that done and I had pretty much all the pieces done uh, and I just needed the, the final touches on the handle, clean it, use some sandpaper and a wire brush uh, to clean it. Those antlers were really bleached out. They've been sitting out in the sun and the Texas heat for I don't know how many years and uh, they were almost all white with just some dirt down in it and clean it all up and then use some walnut varnish, uh, stain and varnish to try and bring the color back. And then it was time to get everything assembled. Used five minute epoxy. Let it dry for a couple hours. Then I just had to do a little bit of cleanup on the pen and a little bit of the epoxy. Put some wax on the handle. Tried to polish that up a little bit with the buffer and then just cleaned it all up. and. Was it it was done at that point and I think it turned out all right you know uh, if I ever have to go to a knife fight that's probably the knife I'm gonna bring with me I hope you all enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. See you next time. Here's the basic concept that I've sketched out for this knife. Plan is to use a piece of truck leaf spring and then I thought I would try and use this deer antler for the handle. Hey everybody. So the first thing I did here, just marking out the size of the piece I needed and cutting it out with the grinder. Grinding the edges off. Once I had it cut, I could forge it down to uh, the right thickness that I needed.
got it down to um, about nine one hundredths, a little less than a tenth of an inch. And I'm just uh, marking out the pattern, then I can go cut it out with the angle grinder. Once I had the shape cut out, it was time to get the center part cut out and basically use the drill press uh, to go around the edges. Once I had uh, the holes drilled, I used a Dremel rotary tool to cut that center section out. And just cleaning up the edges with the same Dremel there. Once it's all cut out, file down the edges and the, try and get it smooth. There, I'm just grinding out the forge marks on the surface there, and also trying to give it a initial uh, bevel on the cutting edge. Actually was able to get it pretty sharp right off the belt sander. It would cut right through the paper there. And I'm just marking the holes out in the handle so I can drill the holes out. And I'm just putting my initials on it there before I go into the heat tree. It's the first time I've ever used deer antler to make anything. Uh, it's a little challenging just cutting out the the shape there that I wanted for the handle uh, on the bandsaw. Right here, I got a little bit of a twist. You can, you can see that um, when I was cutting through it, and the result was uh, it wasn't flat, and I had to sand those down to get them flat. Here's this knife after heat treating and tempering. Heat treated at 15. 25F quenched in oil and for the tempering 250F for two and a half hours. Got the scales cut and I just need to figure out how to attach these. Just drilling the holes out in the deer antler there. The tape on the back side of it when I was drilling to keep uh, keep the antler from chipping out when I drilled through it. Once I got the holes all lined up, I could mark out the final shape uh, and then cut out the, the ends of those deer antlers. I'm just checking the fit of everything before I glued it up. Uh, didn't get the glue up. The battery went out on the camera. 
So here's the next day after it set overnight. Again, the Dremel tool to cut the pins down and take the epoxy off and uh, work on the handle. Try to get the final touches done on the handle. buffing the blade, also uh, buffed the handle, uh, swapped out the buffing wheel and used a different uh, rouge for the deer horn. Well, it cuts onion and some garlic. I used it to prepare uh, dinner. And it worked all right. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Hi, everyone. This is a video about a knife I made from some leaf spring that I had. This, uh, drawing it out and marking out the leaf spring here. This is the first knife I ever made and uh, it was a skinning knife. It's supposed to be a skinning knife anyway. So just drawing out the rough shape of it and then cutting that out with an angle grinder. started uh, forging on the back side. You can see how it curved the blade and then I forged out the cutting edge, rounded off the corners. Normalized it in the forge, just heated it up, and then uh, cut the gas off and let it cool down in the forge for a few hours. Then went to uh, the grinding wheel and the sander to try and get uh, the best profile I could out of it. I'm just marking the holes for the handle. And then moving over to the drill press to drill the holes. This is a piece of uh, Purple Heart wood. I guess it's a kind of an exotic wood from South America and uh, that's what I used for the handle. <coughs> so uh, this is the heat treat. It's uh, 5160. So I heated it up to 1500 Fahrenheit in the kiln and while it was heating up I cut the handle. Drilling the holes there in the handle. It came out of the kiln <clears throat> and I uh, quenched it and actually that's peanut oil. 
I have no idea, uh, only that I needed to use oil, so peanut oil it was, left over from the turkey fry. Then I tempered it back in the kiln at a thousand degrees Fahrenheit for uh, one or two hours. Now I'm just fitting together the handle, making sure it all fits before I glue it up. And there it is glued up and clamped. I used a five minute epoxy to glue the handle. Now I'll sand in the handle down to get the profile. I'm just polishing the blade up on the buffing wheel. didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. I wanted the blade to be a little wider and I didn't quite get the handle exactly how I wanted. So it was a learning experience. Like I said, it's the first knife I ever made. Now I'm uh, moving over to sharpening the blade up. Start with a 400 grit whetstone. And I'm just putting some uh, Danish oil on the handle to try and bring some of the grain out and, and protect the, uh, the wood. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. It's uh, turned out to be okay. I think it's going to be a useful knife. Not exactly what I, uh, what I wanted, but I learned a few things. So um, Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Have you ever wanted to make a Viking knife out of a piece of leaf spring? Well, I did. I'll show you how I made this Viking knife out of a piece of this leaf spring. Thanks for watching. So I started out here just drawing out the basic idea for the knife. Here I'm just measuring out the size of the piece I'm going to need. This leaf spring is tapered along each edge. You can see there. So the next step was to try and knock those edges down. From there I went over to the grinder to smooth those edges down. Then started forging out the blade. Once I had the rough shape of the blade done, I started drawing out the handle. Once I had the rough forging done, I went over to the grinder to clean it up. And so here's this knife after forging, drawing the handle out, and a little bit of grinding on it, clean up the uh, marks from forging. Next step, 
on this, I think, is going to be uh, work on the handle, put in a twist. I'm putting the mark on it and forming the handle here. I did two full twists for the handle. Once I had the forging all done, I normalized it back in the forge and then back to the grinder uh, to uh, clean up the edges again before heat treating. Best guess on the steel is 5160 for the leaf springs, so for uh, the hardening, I heated it up to 1500. Fahrenheit quenched it in peanut oil and went back to temper at about 385 Fahrenheit for two hours. And I'm just uh, putting the final touches on it and sharpening up, getting an edge on the blade. Please subscribe if you liked the video and thanks for watching.
You don't have my legs, do you? No. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Howdy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made a pair of round knives for leather working. I wanted to make a leather sheath for the skinning knife I made a while back, um, but I didn't have a, a round knife, so I figured, what the hell, make it myself. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. I started out with the drawing as usual just to help get my uh, idea that I have in my head down on a piece of paper. This leaf spring is probably from a car or maybe a Jeep. Um, it's about a little more than a quarter inch thick and it's got tapered edges. So 
I got a rough shape cut out, now I can forge it down. So here's this knife after forging and a little bit of cutting and grinding on it. So my plan originally, what I wanted to do was forge it down about one tenth of an inch, which I think I uh, got pretty close to that most of the way around, about a tenth of an inch. And then uh, from there, I figured I would just grind this down uh, and get the forge marks out of it down to about five one hundredths of an inch or so. Uh, as it turns out, when I did this, I didn't have enough material. Nowhere near what I had originally planned on doing. Uh, so this is going to be a smaller version. I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'll probably take another bigger piece of leaf spring. I have some truck leaf spring that I can use, which is a little thicker and also wider. Uh, and I'll try and make this piece from that. This one will just basically be a smaller version. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. and So I'll end up with two head knives, a larger version and a baby brother version. So here's the second attempt. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the forge and try and flatten that down to about. So that piece worked out better. I did have enough material. Uh, it was a little hot, burned the paper there. And uh, just cut out <clears throat> that pattern uh, with an angle grinder, cutting wheel and a grinding wheel. I tried sanding it down, taking some of the marks out, and tried to get it as flat as I could, and uh, tried to put a a little bit of bevel on the edge. I actually forgot to normalize it before I did all that. So I normalized it after. Uh, normalization at 1600 degrees. Took it out and let it air cool. It's a piece of African mahogany that I'm making the handle out of. Back in the forge for hardening. Meanwhile, i cutting the handle out on the bandsaw. For the hardening, I heated up to 1525 Fahrenheit, quenched in peanut oil. Uh, and then I tempered it in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours. My kiln uh, takes too long to cool down. So I went ahead and used the oven. I'm just cleaning it up after the quench. The handles together, let them set overnight. There's a lizard.
Then I ground the handle down. Sanded it, try and get it cleaned up and uh, put some uh, boiled linseed oil on the handle. And just sharpening it up on the, that's a soft Arkansas stone. The knife's pretty sharp, cuts through leather. Cuts through my shirt on the table there too. Well, both knives turned out pretty sharp and they both cut leather. So I think they're gonna work for my leather projects. Not sure whether to call them a round knife or a head knife. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Today I'm taking this rusty old leaf spring and I'm going to turn it into a knife. Don't know if I'd call this a survival knife or a bushcraft knife. It's definitely uh, something I would use outdoors, maybe camping or hiking. So I started out just doing a rough sketch of kind of the idea for the knife. Then measured out the leaf spring, cut off the excess. And this leaf spring is, it's car leaf spring. It's tapered along the edges and it's also hardened steel. So uh, a couple things I had to deal with before I could really do any cutting, I needed to soften it up. So I heated it up in the forge and let it cool down slowly in some vermiculite for several hours. And then I was able to uh, mark it out and, and cut off that tapered edge there on my little portable bandsaw. I tried cutting that steel without annealing it or normalizing it first and it, it doesn't cut very well. It just tears up the bandsaw blade. So after I had that done, there still had a little bit of that taper left on the edge and that's what I'm forging there. Just trying to square up those edges. Once I was done with the forging, it was time to remove the scale. I did that with the grinder, uh, angle grinder. Then I marked my pattern out and went ahead and just cut that piece out on the little bandsaw. I did all the profiling with an angle grinder and a little 1x48 belt sander. And for the choil there, I used a 3 16 chainsaw file to file that groove there. Uh, and I marked out the center line and then it was back to the belt sander to put in the uh, initial rough grind on the blade. And I used uh, the little plunge line jig that I made uh, in a previous video to help me get that plunge line straight on both sides.
So at this point, the knife was still a little heavy in the handle, and I still had more hand sanding to do on the blade portion. So I went ahead and drilled some holes in the handle just to lighten it up and try and even out the balance. After I had those holes drilled, I normalized it twice and then quenched in Parks 50. After quenching and it's got a hell of a warp to it. So yeah, it's warped pretty bad and I tried uh, clamping it to a plate, heating it up to about 400 and cooling it off with cold water. I did that twice. That really didn't get all of the warp out and so I ended up putting it in my vise and heating it up with a torch and then cooling one side of it with water and I was finally able to get the warp out and get it straightened out. So after I was done with the heat treating and the tempering, I uh, hand sanded it up to 320 grit and then moved on to start working on the handle. A couple of bloodwood scales that I used for the handle. Mark that out and cut it out on the bandsaw. I got my holes marked out and got the holes all drilled in it. Once I had the scales uh, all sanded and got that profile done on those, it was time to put the secondary bevel on the blade and that's just a little wooden jig at about a 27 degree or so angle that I'm using with the belt sander so I can grind in that secondary bevel. And uh, once I had that done, uh, finished up the hand sanding on the blade, I sanded it up to 800 grit. Then I went ahead and sharpened it on my Arkansas stone. I was able to get it pretty sharp. So here I'm cleaning all the grease and oil off before bluing it. And for the bluing, I used uh, Brownells Oxfo Blue. It's the first time I'd ever used that product. I'd used uh, Birchwood Casey's Perma Blue in the past. I'd say they probably perform about the same. But I would probably prefer the Brownells. I think it might have performed a little bit better. And I put a couple of coats on that and blew the whole knife. So for the scales, I used boiled linseed oil, wipe that on, let it uh, soak in for several hours, clean that off. Then some paste wax, uh, basically furniture paste wax, let that dry, and then buff that off, try and get a good polished surface on the scales. So once I had all that done, uh, it was time to glue up the handle, use some 30 minute epoxy, clamped it up, let it sit under the heat lamp for several hours. And so putting it under the heat lamp for a few hours uh, really speeds up the curing of the epoxy. That set and cure, unclamp it, and that a finished knife uh, made from leaf spring.
So we'll see you next time, and adios, amigos.